By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am joined by Jakob. He is the brand new patron of Timmy Talks. Thank you, Jakob, for supporting the show. And we're going to play a fun game of magic. Well, I hope it's going to be fun. He's brought a giant tribal deck to the table. Yes, giant tribal. So I'm really looking forward to that. He's got a two-headed giant. He's got frost giants in there. I believe also stone giants. So it's just going to be a lot of fun. And I'm battling against him with a red and black disco troll deck. So I've bought, uh, brought my Timmy Trolls back to the channel to battle the giants. So it's basically trolls versus giants, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, this this is probably going to be fun. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, uh, by the way. But before I start with the deck deck section of this video, first, a message from our lovely sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into those deck decks. I'm going to start with the mono red deck Giant Tribal by Jakob. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Jakob. So this is Giant Tribal and I think it's really cool. He's playing 10 Giants in this deck. So I think we can call it Giant Tribal, right? If you're playing with 10 Giants. As you can see, it is mono red. It also has a lot of burn, but also a few often trolls. So oi, 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 the often troll is here as well. And Maybe I just want to start with this little creature because there's some cool synergy between the Stone Giant and the Often Troll. The Often Troll is a 2-2 for 1 red and 2. You can pay 1 red and you can regenerate it. And then you have the Stone Giant and the Stone Giant can give creatures flying. So listen up, Stone Giant, a 3-4 creature for 2 red and 2 with a pretty cool ability. And, and I love the flavor text as well. What goes up must come down. Yeah, that, <laughs> that makes sense. So Stone Giant, you can activate the ability Tap it and then it says target creature you control with toughness less than stone giant's power gains flying until end of turn. Destroy that creature at the beginning of the next end step. So um, in other words, he can throw the often troll because it's just a 2-2. So give it flying, throw it to the opponent, in this case me, throw it at my face. And the cool thing here is that, uh, you know, it gets destroyed at the end, um, at the beginning of the next end step. But actually... That doesn't have to happen because often troll has regeneration so you can just pay one red and regenerate it and it survives and you can throw it again the next turn so i love that that really simple synergy i think it's super cool so full playset of often trolls full playset of stone giants we also see a full playset of the two-headed giant the two-headed giant i mean this card's kind of dear to me because it didn't get reprinted and revised and those cards always have something special and because it's it's a card, what I call, it's the full package. It's flavor-wise, it makes sense. It's a two-headed giant. It's one red and four. It's a four-four trampler. I think all giants should have trampled, to be honest, because they always trample over things, right? I mean, and uh, but the ability, I love the ability. It says two-headed giant can block an additional creature each combat. And look at the art of this creature. You see two heads. So it can look two ways, right? Two different directions. So it makes sense it can stop two creatures because it's got two heads. So I just, I really love that, that that simple flavor. I think it's super cool. I really love this creature from a, from a design perspective. Um, and then the last giant, only two of those, uh, it's the Frost Giant. Frost Giant is six to cast. I'm just going to repeat it, six to cast. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Trample. It should have Trample, but it doesn't. It's a 4-4 four -four, and it has Rampage 2. Now, Rampage is this ability that really got overestimated it got introduced in legends and every creature with rampage has a huge almost every creature has a huge casting cost so rampage 2 what does it do um whenever this creature becomes blocked it gets plus two plus two until end of turn for each creature blocking it beyond the first so if you block it with two creatures this creature becomes a six six so cards with rampage are always really nice to combine with lure now of course jacob is not playing with any green, so that doesn't really matter, but just, just a little a little sidestep. 
Now, um, when we look at the rest of the deck, we also see just a lot of burn, right? We see three fireballs, three disintegrates, four lightning bolts. So we see we see black vice also quite aggressive. So just just a lot of burn going on. We see a single fork, which I love fork. I think fork in this deck can be quite disastrous for me actually, because you can just fork a big fireball and then I'm double toast. Um, and I guess you need a lot of mana with this deck, and therefore he's playing four Moxen, and he's also playing uh, four Sisters of the Flame, which I think is really cool. Sisters of the Flame, two red and one to cast for this creature from the dark, a two-two, you can tap it for a red mana, right? So it will just help you to ramp out those big giants a turn early, and of course it can help you to make your Disintegrate or Fireball just a little bit bigger. Um, what's also kind of interesting in this deck is the inclusion of the two Fountain of Youths. So I think that Jakob probably has found out during playtesting that just a little bit of life gain can get him to a point in the game where he can build a big enough fireball or, or a big enough disintegrate or, or, you know, have enough time to play out all his big giants. That's kind of the conclusion that I'm making, you know, why he would put a little bit of life gain in there. I think if he has it, because I don't know how big his collection is, a Diamond Valley could be an interesting um, consideration as well because the giants are pretty big. So he could maybe take out one Fountain of Youth, put in a Diamond Valley. On the other hand, Fountain of Youth, this card is better than a lot of people give it credit for. But okay, this is the deck of Jakob. Now let's take a look at my deck, Troll Disco. And here we see a my deck, Troll Disco. So this is really a famous deck, right? One of the archetypes in old school magic that's built around the simple synergy between regeneration and Nevenerals Disc. Nevenerals Disc, an artifact for four, comes into play tapped. When you untap it, you can pay one and then it destroys all artifacts, all creatures, all enchantments. But of course it says destroys. So if you have uh, creatures with regeneration, they survive. And of course, what regenerates better than a troll? Nothing does. So I'm playing four such trolls, four often trolls, and also two will o' the wisps. And all these creatures, all 10 of them have regeneration. Then there's one creature in this deck that I play that doesn't have regeneration. And it's the only de uh, card that's actually not reprinted in the deck. And that is Rook Egg. So Rook Egg is an 0-3 uh, egg from Arabian Nights. And when it dies, you get a 4-4 flying bird token at the end of your turn. So you actually want this egg to die. You want it to be destroyed, in this case, by the Nevenerals disc. So that's quite nice. And um, talking about reprints and stuff like that, this deck is actually pretty budget friendly. There are only four cards in here that are not budget friendly. Or actually five, I should say. And those are the four Badlands. Dual Lands, of course, always being expensive. So that's a thing, and maybe you could do this with two Badlands as well. But the Badlands are really handy because, of course, they give red and black mana, but it's also a swamp. So if you have this, your set Troll becomes a 3-3. But I think in this deck, you could maybe do with just two Badlands, put some more basics in. I think that can kind of work. Um, you could even consider playing Blood Moons in the sideboard, actually, when I'm looking at this list. Maybe I should. Um, and then, of course, there's the Wheel of Fortune, which is very costly. You can play this deck without Wheel of Fortune. You don't need the wheel. I just play it because there's not a lot of card draw in this deck. And it's just a fun card to play. That's why I play Wheel of Fortune in this deck. I don't really play it because it's it's that useful. Um, so yeah, the gist of the deck is just get the Nevenerals disc on, destroy it. I'm going to regenerate my creatures or, of course, kill my eggs. Get, get more value out of the disc activation than my opponent and win it that way. There are a few like cool tricks in this deck. Um, I'm playing, for example, with Sacrifice. That's one uh, black for an interrupt. And then you can uh, sacrifice a creature to sacrifice and you get mana equal to their casting cost. So I can play that, for example, on my egg and then I get four uh, black mana in this case. And then, of course, I get a four for flying bird token. Now, I can use those four black mana maybe to fuel a fireball or an earthquake. But what I can also do, of course, is fuel my Howl from Beyond with it. So there's always kind of this ultimate dream where I maybe attack with three attackers and he can block two and take damage from one and then I can play my sacrifice and sack a creature and gain mana and use that mana to play a Howl from Beyond on the unblocked creature and win the game. That's kind of kind of the, the, the dream scenario that has actually never happened despite the fact that I play this deck quite frequently. Anyway, uh, this is my Troll Disco deck. What more can I say? Um, let me know in the comments if you also enjoy playing Troll Disco and if you agree with me that this is actually a budget-friendly deck, especially when you take uh, Old School Magic into consideration. Anyway, uh, this is my list. We looked at the list of Jakob, so that only means one thing. We are ready for this battle. Giants versus Trolls. Let's go.
Game number one, here we go. So on the left, we have Jakob. He's playing a giant tribal. I'm sitting on the right on the play here, playing a Troll a Disco. So it's a black and red deck. So I started here with a Mishra's Factory. Passing the turn to Jakob. And now let's see what he can do. I think he's, he's chatting about his red sleeves. Maybe about that annoying curving that happens at the top of the sleeves after a while, right? It's a... Uh, it's a nuisance. I agree, Jakob. It's a nuisance. And a pretty funny playmat, by the way. Is that a dragon whelp there in the middle? <laughs> With the uh, Christmas theme. And there's a Mox Ruby, a Mox Sapphire. Wow, look at that opening. Just a lot of zero drop stuff. And he can gain a live turn one with that Fountain of Youth. So Fountain of Youth, zero to cast, card from the dark. Two and tap, gain a life. And, um, you know, when I played this game, I didn't know what deck Jakob was playing. And after seeing his opener, I kind of thought, okay, maybe he's playing with Atok. But then, of course, I saw here his, uh, his turn two play. So this is the Stone Giant. It's a 3-4 uh, creature. You can tap it and give target creature flying. That is toughness lower than the power of the, uh, the Stone Giant. There's the often troll, the Timmy troll. Oi, oi, oi. And uh, Jakob also playing with a play set of often trolls, by the way. So we're going to see a lot of often trolls this uh, this match. There's a desert card from uh, Arabian Nights. Another stone giant. I guess he's just going to swing in, right? Yeah, because I cannot regenerate. So probably just going to take three here. And I mean, this is a bit of a problem for me because there's just a lot of like three, four big boys there now on the board on the side of Jakob. So I probably need to keep my often troll on blocking duty. Could consider then double blocking with my Mistress Factory. Let's first see what I can do. If I can find a land in the Neven Earls disc, that would be like super. I'm keeping my fingers crossed here, hoping that that's the play I'm going to make. Tapping three, no land drop, it seems. Untapping again, changing my mind, maybe realizing that I cannot regenerate. So just passing the turn. Perhaps I have a bolt in hand. I could block on the often troll, regenerate, and bolt. So let's see what's going to happen here. Jakob, of course, putting his creatures into the red zone. Going to block one of the stone giants and regenerate. Problem is, I don't have any red mana, by the way, for a bolt. So even if I have a bolt, I cannot play it. Bit of some land issues. At least the good news for me is that Jakob is not doing anything else, just passing the turn. Tapping... Black and one. Okay, probably found the demonic from the top. Oh, look at this forking the demonic tutor. I love it. So that means that Jakob can also find a card of choice. I love that stuff. And I really wonder, also thinking of Jakob's list, I wonder what he's going to look for. Maybe I'm just going to look for a soul ring or a land. I mean, I hope that I've got a Neverworld disc in my hand and I just need a land so I can cast it, right? That's kind of the scenario that I'm that I'm hoping for. So play the Demonic Tutor. If it's a land, probably going to play it out now. Yep, okay, there's another bad land. So probably looked up that dual land, passing the turn. So now I can still regenerate my often troll, and I can play out a bolt if I have it. Ooh, there's a Frost Giant. If you looked that up, Jakob, you're really a boss. So Frost Giant, a 4-4 four, four for 6 mana with Rampage 2, card from Legends. There's the attack, double stone giant into the red zone. Probably going to block one of them. And I have to say, Jakob's deck is going on full cylinder. So blocking one, taking three, dropping to 11. And I think he's pointing out that he forgot to use the uh, Fountain of Youth, perhaps on my end step. I'm not sure. And okay, there's the bolt. So there's a play that maybe I wanted to make earlier, but couldn't because I didn't have double red. So at least killing one of the giants... I'm on 11, so it's not too bad. Do remember, Jakob also plays a lot of burn. Gonna tap three. A Setch Troll. Okay, and that Setch Troll is now a 3-3, three, three, but still very light on Lance. So despite that extra bad Lance, it's still not ideal for me. Because now Jakob just has a safe attack with two creatures, can only block one and regenerate. Okay, actually not attacking, you're afraid of a double block. Of course, I could double block and see where Jakob where Jaco would put the damage to re then regenerate that creature. Anyway, blocking on the often troll, the uh, frost giant. Oh, and now we see a chaos orb. Yeah, he can flip. 
Could also go on a land. Anyway, he's first going to flip. Let's see if he hits. There he goes. Going for the Frost Giant as his target. It is a hit. And uh, yep, Sedge is gone. Like I said, you could also consider going for a land. Then again, just go for the Sedge. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. That is cool. Losing my Nevenerals disc. Oh, two discs in hand. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm a little bit surprised that I didn't play the disc out earlier, but went for the Sedge instead. Maybe try to preserve some life. Oh, man, this is really bad. I really needed uh, a Nevenerals disc to get back into this, actually. I'm on 11. Now, Jakob has drawn a fresh 7 as well because of the wheel. And again, like I said, he's playing with lots of burn, like 3 Disintegrate, 3 Fireball, 4 Bolts. It's looking bad. And that's, of course, a problem with the Nevenerals disc. Yes, it can be great, but it's slow. You know, you got to tap 4. It comes into play tapped. Then if you're already stumbling in mana, it usually means it's the only thing you can do. Um, and then the next turn, if it's still there, yeah, then you can use it. Anyway, here we see the uh, Rook Egg. Okay, at least this is a really good blocker. This is going to make it hard for Jakob to attack, right? So Rook Egg, an 0-3 creature from Arabian Nights. When it dies, you get a 4-4 bird token at the beginning of your next end step. Here we see the Two-Headed Giant, 4-4 Trampler for 5 and can block 2 creatures. Yeah, really cool. And it's a black bordered one. So I wonder, Jakob, is this a beta one? I think so. Let me know in the comments below. And I believe I saw you had a full playset in your deck as well. So perhaps you have a full playset of, of beta two-headed giants, which is pretty cool because they are um, rares. And here we see a, a sister of the flame. So it's a 2-2 from the dark. You can tap it for one red. There's the attack. Two giants going into the red zone. So it's kind of offering me the trade. I'm a little suspicious here. I wonder why he's doing it. Anyway, blocking one and of course blocking the frost giant probably with the egg. And the egg is a goner. So at the end of the turn of Yakov, I'm going to get a 4-4 flyer. So pretty happy with this, but also puzzled. I wonder if Yakov has a plan. So there's my 4-4 flyer, and now Yakov passing the turn. Drawing here. Let's see what I can do. Five mana, six mana. Okay, so it looks like I'm done with the mana issues. Tapping three, perhaps another troll hitting the board. Sedge or often. Yep, there's the Sedge. With a nice altar from MTG Underground. It's a, it's very it's a very cool altar. It's got cool flavor text where it goes like the, the the dark ritual didn't work, so he opted for soup. Just really funny. So you see him kind of with a spoon making soup. Anyway, passing the turn here, of course, not attacking. I'm really on uh, in defense mode. And I mean, Jakob has a lot of mana there. Oh, look at this. Everything into the red zone. He's super aggressive. But I think I can just block everything. Uh, the Rook token probably on the Stone Giant because it's a 3-4. And of course, the Two-Headed Giant has Trample. So it's a bit of a risk. I could also then decide to do the Rook token for the... Two-headed giant, I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's because I don't want to take any damage at all. I'm, I'm a little bit worried because he's playing so aggressive. Exactly. Counting his mana, can it be more obvious? There's a bolt. Uh-oh, I'm on eight. Am I dead now? <laughs> am I dead? Don't do it, Jacob. Don't do it. Yeah, I'm dead. I am dead. Also, my deck is zero life gain, by the way. So... This is not good for me, this. Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game behind, need to win this to stay in it. Playing a Badlands here, the dual land. You can tap it for red or for black mana. Really great with Setch Troll. Oh, look at this, Jakob again having an explosive opener with the Mock Sapphire and again the Fountain of Youth so he can start making life again. Passing the turn here, uh, just uh, playing a mountain. And look at that, Jakob, of course, on Antsep, gaining a life. You're going to 21. 
playing a desert and there's an often troll oi 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 two two and uh, you can regenerate it for one red very handy little creature we're both playing with a full playset. am i also going to play an often troll here no i'm going to play a stone rain Gonna go for the red mana passing the turn. Also knowing, of course, that Jakob has a few giants in there that need double red. Especially the stone giants that really were tough on me uh, that first game. Gonna drop to 18 here, often troll attacking. There's a swamp. Ooh, just passing the turn. This is not good. And now Jakob finding second red playing the stone giant. So the stone rain didn't really help that much. It kind of delayed the stone giant, I guess. Oh, there's a terror coming in from the sideboard. Actually terroring the often troll here. Not the stone giant. Does that mean that I have a Nevenerals disc? Yeah, going for the disc. So the thing is, I played the terror. I'm taking a risk if he has a shatter. It's tough, you know, it's bad luck. But if he doesn't, I'm going to gain some more value, you know, out of the disc. Because, of course, the disc cannot destroy the often troll because he can just regenerate the often troll. So look at this, no shatter. So I can pop the disc here. Exactly, destroy three permanents. We do see Jakob gaining a life. We're going to go up to 22. But this is a good disc activation after the disc playing my own often troll. Oi, 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 the Timmy troll. Back in action. And one of the reasons I love playing with my uh, Troll Disco deck is because of these altered Timmy Trolls. There we see a Stone Giant by Yako being played out. 3-4 creature for 4 mana. And I mean, he's got a play set of those. He, he's just playing with lots of Giants. He's going to keep casting them. And I'm actually having a tough time handling them all. Okay, there's a uh, Demonic Tutor. Two cards in hand for me. I wonder what I'm going to look up. I mean, so many options. I could go for another disc. Kind of thinking, you know, maybe he's going to play more uh, more Giants. I could also go for a Wheel of Fortune because my hand's almost empty. Then again, I would give Jakob new cards as well. I could go for a Sedge, maybe. A Jam Day Tome, perhaps, to draw some more cards, although that's quite slow. Could even go for a Mind Twist, but I wonder, maybe I boarded those out. What I usually do in these friendly matches, I say, are you playing with Mind Twist? And if my opponent says no, I just board out the Twist. Unless I play with Zombies. I think it's I think Mind Twist is a very natural link with a Zombie deck. Anyway, I'm um, taking my turn here. Jakob hasn't done anything. That's good news for me. I mean, I can attack here, but actually those Deserts alone can kill me. I am attacking here. I wonder what I have in hand then. He can just block, right? Do I have... Um, I'm kind of signaling to Jakob that I have uh, a Lightning Bolt here. So he is taking the damage and then dealing two damage with the Deserts. I can just regenerate. And then I'm going to tap four. What are we going to do for four? Okay, there's a Rook Egg. So yeah, this was kind of a nice attack for me. And I think in general, um, Rook Egg is quite good. I wonder what this altar is, by the way. Could it be a Library of Alexandria? That looks like an autograph by uh, Mark Poole. If it is, he, he has two cards in hand, so I don't have to worry too much. There's the attack, so probably just going to block here. Exactly, going to get a 4-4 flyer on end step. I wonder what Jakob uh, is going to do. Yep, passing the turn. So I'm going to untap, upkeep, and draw. Okay, there's a factory. So, I mean, this 4-4 flyer is quite good, right? I can just fly over, deal 4 points of damage, put Jakob on uh, 16. That's exactly what I do. Oh, he's going to give it a damage, and then does he have a bolt? <laughs> oh, man. These deserts are so good. I mean, at least he still takes the damage, right? Exactly. He is going to go to 16, and he loses a bolt, so it's something, but... Oh, man. I was hoping for more. You know, with my 4-4 bird. But then again, the moment that he attacked with the stone giant, I could have known that he had a bigger plan. Those deserts are just really annoying. Desert is another card that every time you play against, you're like, oh yeah, this card's actually better than, than you think it is. 
There's a tap of three. Okay, there's a set troll. So just having a lot of trolls. And passing the turn here to Jakob. So not attacking with my often troll. And also a pass from Jakob. So we're kind of in a standstill, but now I can attack, of course, with both trolls because I can regenerate them. There I go. So he's going to block the Setch, I assume. So I'm going to regenerate the Setch. He's going to take two from the often troll. He's going to try to kill the often troll with the desert. So I got to regenerate that as well. He's going to drop to 14. Yep, so paying that red mana to regenerate the Timmy Troll. I mean, I've got a lot of lands, which is quite nice. Remember the first game I was stuck on lands. That was just a big problem. Tapping four, are we going to see? No, we're not. It looked for a moment there I was going to tap four, maybe to play a Nevenerals Disc. I wonder what I have in hand, because a Disc seems quite good right now. There's a Sister of the Flame. It's a bit, uh, the connection ain't, isn't perfect on the side of Jakob. It looks like he's also playing a lightning bolt in my face. I'm on 12. Oh, and then there's a wheel. Oh, and that wheel is really good because that card, I do believe it's a Loa. What am I doing? Okay, there's a howl from beyond. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. Oh man, I couldn't use the Howl, and also I'm discarding my Nevenerals Disc. So I, I wanted to play out that Nevenerals Disc. Oh, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. So I've played the Howl from Beyond on instant speed, kind of giving my uh, my factory some extra power. I don't know if that's a good, that's a good plan. And now, of course, it's gonna yeah draw an extra card, so that is a Loa. Now we're now we're a hundred percent sure. Now, if he has a bolt, he can just kill my factory. So I'm, I don't really understand why I animated. Probably just not to take damage from the stone giant. If he wanted to attack, then he knows. Okay, I can trade it. So it kind of saves me some damage there. Now remember, I'm on twelve. I'm kind of already feeling vulnerable here against that uh, deck of Jakob. Hey, he's playing disintegrates, fireballs, lightning bolts. It's risky. Anyway, let's see what I can do. Tapping a black, perhaps for a willow to wisp. No, I'm just going to animate everything into the red zone. Wow. I'm surprised I'm also attacking with the Mishra's factory. How is he blocking here? I guess it makes sense to do that on the stone giant, right? Okay, so he's trading it for Sisters of the Flame. Regenerating the Setch. Dealing two points of damage. He's going to drop to 12. Let's see what else I can do. Tapping three. Okay, there's another often troll. Okay, so I've got a lot of trolls going on. I can block the stone giant next turn if Jakob attacks with it, which is quite nice. Tapping a black as well. Okay, there's a willow. So I got a lot of defense going on. Now do remember Jakob has that active Loa. He's drawing twice as many cards as me and he's got a handful of cards. Oh no, he's counting again. Oh, he's counting again. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You know, when you play against these direct damage decks and these people are constantly counting, you're like, no. Oh, man. How many does he have? Four, six, seven, nine. So he can hit me for eight. Fireball for eight. Or just play out a big cool creature. I like that better, Yako, playing out a big cool giant. Two-headed giant. Beautiful creature. Four, four trampler. And it can block two creatures, which actually could be relevant in this uh, in this matchup. And Jakob tapping more, keeping one red open to regenerate the often troll here, which is relevant. Yeah, this is annoying. It's it's gonna be hard for me to find a good attack here now. Jakob on twelve. I mean, maybe I've got a good attack if I have a bolt in hand, because then after blocks, it can maybe kill a creature. There's a factory. Organizing my creatures a little bit. Yeah, and this is always difficult, because you know when your opponent has an active Library of Alexandria, you need to put pressure on your opponent. But if you can't, you can't, right? 
There's a soul ring. Now do remember, I'm also playing with, of course, an earthquake and I'm playing uh, with a fireball as well. Only one single copy, but still, I've got a lot of lands there, a lot of mana. 11 in total, so I could play a fireball for 10. Ooh, there's a soul ring. There's the frost giant. Yeah, and this is great, of course, for Jakob, right? He can just play out two cards a turn, keep a full grip of cards and pass turn. He's fine with the way it's going. At a certain point, he's going to find his burn. He's going to burn me out. That's kind of the, the scenario that we're, uh, that, that is most probable to, to happen. Okay, there's a Jam Day Tome. This is good because then we were both drawing two cards. So at least the playing field just got a little bit more, you know, honest. But it's still far from perfect. There's a Badlands for Jakob, probably seven in hand, gonna tap the Loa to draw card number eight. I assume at least. And this is an interesting game number two. There's more happening, look at this, even more creatures. Is Jakob going off the Loa now, by the way? wonder if he is. Not quite sure. I do know that he's playing a lot of stuff. I think he needs to tap a little bit more exactly. So there was, I believe, a Stone Giant for four, right? And a Set Stroll for three. So he's tapped enough. And I'm going to draw an extra card, of course, with my Jam Day Tome. Going to untap, upkeep, draw. But yeah, that was unexpected that Jakob uh, didn't draw an extra card with the Loa. Okay, there's a Rook Egg. Okay, playing a bolt on my rook egg. I'm a little bit surprised with this move because I could have done this, you know, in the second main of Jakob, for example, before the end of before the beginning of the end step of Jakob, and then I could have had a four four flyer, and the, the, it would have been better to just keep the lightning bolt in hand, you know. Also, because it's a great blocker for if Jakob wants to go for like an alpha strike, so. I really don't understand why I did it so aggressively with the bolt directly on the Rook Egg. Anyway, Jakob here just playing out to everything really going uh, off the uh, the lower train here. The Chaos Orb is looking really good. I would flip on the book, I think. Oh, there's a Shatter though. So in response, going to play a Shatter taking care of the Chaos Orb. And Jakob has to be careful they're not showing his cards because we could see a disintegrate there in his hand. Now remember, these are, of course, friendly matches. I believe I, I believe I reminded Jakob a few times, but you see this often with, with people who are not used to play on um, uh, online, you know, or kind of new to this. They don't realize that they're kind of showing their cards. Um, there's a fireball, by the way, on my 4-4 flyer. Yeah, I, I was really not impressed with my own play the previous turn. There's the attack dropping to 10 here now. Oh, this is so risky. Also, after I've seen that disintegrating Jakob's hand, I think I'm already dead. But what I wanted to say, I really wasn't impressed with that Lightning Bolt Rook Egg play that I did. Why? You know, I could have just waited with that. Anyway, there's a Swamp. There are some more blockers. Problem is I need to deal damage. Yeah, I mean, this is this is okay, this disc. It's okay. It's not even great because I'm going to lose my own Jam Day Tome to it. The problem, though, is that Jakob has a lot of mana. He's playing with a lot of burn, and I'm on 10. Does he have enough? Or maybe, maybe, maybe Jakob wants to win without burn. I think that's it. I think that's why he's not burning me out. He's going to attack here first with the Giants. Let's just see what's going to happen. Two often trolls, Frost Giant, Two-Headed Giant, Stone Giant. I mean, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> when is the last time you've been attacked by a horde of trampling giants? That's just really cool. Actually, there's only one giant with trample, but you know what I mean. So I'm trying to find the best way to uh, to declare blockers. So I've got, got five blockers, six blockers, including the factory. So he's got 
Six attackers. Of course, my Willow isn't very useful against the two-headed giant. So I guess you want to put your Willows in front of the stone giants. Yeah, taking a damage with the Setch because I'm blocking the two-headed giant probably with the Setch troll. And my Willows in front of the stone giant. Going to animate my factory. I guess factory can pump itself. I can block an off control. Blocking another off control. Look at that. One of the off controls just going to die. It's just going to let it die up. There's a disintegrate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. He just first went for the Alpha Strike, and then after that, he, and why not? Why shouldn't you? Why not just attack with, with all the Giants? That was fun. That was a cool attack. Um, and so we see Jacob winning here, game number two, winning the match. But don't go away yet, because we played a third game, and it was fun. So uh, let's just shuffle up, play some more Magic. Game number three, here we go. So can I finally find a victory against Jacob? I think it's going to be tough. Impossible is nothing. But it's going to be tough. Anyway, Sol Ring here, turn one. That's a, that's a good start. You know, it, maybe I can now ramp up. We've seen Jakob ramp. Oh, look at that. Mox Sapphire again. That's really good. Into a mountain. But no Fountain of Youth. Okay, no Fountain of Youth this time. Oh, this is dirty. There's the Mind Twist. I thought I boarded that out. I guess I didn't. Maybe I boarded it back in after the burn. I'm like, I'm going to be mean. So here is a Mind Twist for three. Card number two has to go from Jakob's hand. That's a Lightning Bolt. Card number three has to go. That's an off control. And again, card number two, which is a Mountain. I'm pretty happy with this score. I'm happy. And of course, that Soul Ring is what makes this uh, Mind Twist so good. I have to say Mind Twist, if you play it without power, it's okay. It's like a fair, fair is a big word, but it's a sorcery speed card, you know. It really gets unfair if you, well, this is old school, right? It's unbalanced anyway, but it really gets powerful if you combine it with the power nine. Anyway, uh, here we see a Rook Egg hitting the board. Jakob playing a Chaos Orb. I wonder if he wants to flip on the Soul Ring. Looks like he is going to activate it, right? Yeah, he is. Okay, what is he going to flip it on? It is a hit. He is going to flip it on the Soul Ring. I'm actually kind of fine with it. It's not perfect, but I'm kind of fine with that. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Nefneral's Disc. So remember, the disc can blow up my Rook Egg. That means I will get a 4-4 Burt token. He will see Jakob passing the turn. And Jakob has mana issues. So maybe it's worth it to just pop the disc now, destroy the uh, Sapphire. But I'm not, though. I'm passing the turn. I'm... Not sure if I'm happy with this. He's passing the turn, so before the beginning of his end step, I guess I'm popping the disc. So the egg dies, I get the 4-4 and I can instantly attack with it. I guess it kind of makes sense then again. Wouldn't it, have, wouldn't it have been better to just pop the disc to make sure that Jakob didn't have access to that to Sapphire? Let me know in the comments below how you feel about that. Anyway, tapping for another disc hitting the board. So just finding a lot of discs. Does look like my is my hand empty here? Ooh, Sisters of the Flame. Yeah, and now there's this thing. Do you want to pop the disc to kill Sisters of the Flame? I guess you don't, right? You want to keep your 4-4 four, four flyer. So one card in hand for me. And this is now kind of a race, right? Because as soon as Jacob can start playing out his cards, he's got card advantage. Another Sisters of the Flame. There's a pass. Two cards in hand. Of course, I still have the disc, though, so that's pretty good. Attacking here. Jakob dropping to eight. Okay, okay. Will I be able to actually win a game? Oh, there's a fireball, though, and it's enough. Look at that. It's enough to kill. Am I now? Yeah, I'm now going to use my disc to kill the Sisters of the Flame on the side of Jakob. But that was a nice fireball with the help of the Sisters of the Flame. He was able to kill my bird token. And now I've got a problem, right? Because I have nothing to actually deal damage to Jakob. Yes, he's on 8, but I'm kind of stranded. There's a Mox Pearl and a Fountain of Youth. So he can slowly start, you know, gaining life again with the Fountain. It's going to be very slow, but still. 
I wonder what that one card is. Maybe just another land. I'm so land flooded right now. Jakob, of course, gaining a life. Going to go back up to nine. And that's always frustrating to see when you got your opponent down so much and he starts to, to gain life, no matter how slow it goes. There we see a stone giant. So stone giant, of course, the three, four creatures playing a full play set of those. Oh, look at that. Another Navneral's disc. Okay. I'm just finding all my lands on all my discs, but I, I can't complain because, again, I think the disc is going to be quite strong here. It's going to destroy three permanents on the side of Jakob. So I guess I'm going to block and regenerate here. I mean, as Jakob, I would have been tempted to maybe also animate the factory. Then again, if I if that one card's a bolt, you're in, in deep trouble. I think I should pop the disc here. Exactly, gonna pop the disc. Jakob's gonna gain a life, gonna go back up to uh, 10, I believe. Passing the turn. There is a often troll by Jakob. 2-2 two, two Regenerator. The perfect creature to battle my discs. And look at my graveyard, by the way. Three Nevenor discs are already in there. Tapping three. There's a Stone Rain. Taking care of the man land. Mishra's Factory is a goner. Passing the turn here back to Jakob. Jakob attacking. I, can, I guess I can just block here with the Willow. Yeah, and at moments like this, I really wonder, should my Willow the Wisp maybe be a Drudge or Skeleton? At least that can attack. Two cards in hand, passing the turn. Going through my graveyard, so maybe there's an anime dead in there. Who knows? I mean, there's a Rukak in there, a Stone Rain, a Soul Ring, and I think three Nevenerals Discs. That's it. If I have an anime debt, I probably want to check out the graveyard of Jakob. Although in Jakob, I don't think there's much. There's Stone Giant. Just passing the turn to look at that. So I'm not really doing that much. Neither is Jakob, though. That's, I guess, the good news for me. Jakob on 10. I'm still on 20. But he's got more cards in hand. So as soon as he starts drawing some more mana, I'm pretty sure that hands may be full with two-headed giants and frost giants and stuff like that. Playing a set troll here, by the way. This is good news. A 3-3. Three, three, one black regenerate. So that's an attacker. Of course, Jakob does have a blocker. Oh, that's unfortunate. Disintegrate. Disintegrate. At least it's not to the face, I guess. Not to the dome. There's the attack. So, oh, there's a bolt. So I did have a bolt in hand. And of course, this is great timing because Jakob tapped out. So couldn't save the sedge. Two cards in hand passing. Turn again back to Jakob. What an interesting game three this is. Here we see a stone giant hitting the board. And again, it looks like I'm just passing the turn or not. Okay, I guess I'm not. Okay, yeah, just drawing is not attacking. So also Jakob not doing anything. Tapping four. Okay, this is really good at GM Dayton. This is huge. This could be the difference. This can be the game changer. If I'm going to start drawing some cards here, I can find some threats. Yeah, I'm going to draw a card with the Tome. And now I'm drawing twice as many cards as Jakob, and it should eventually help me here. Tapping three. Okay, there's a Timmy Troll. Passing the turn to Jakob. And of course, the good news for me here is that, yes, I have the book drawn twice as much, but I also have more life, double the amount of life as Jakob. Jakob playing here is Sisters of the Flame again. The 2-2, you can tap for a red. And there is a Lightning Bolt. I think I'm almost tempted to just play the Bolts, actually, on the life total instead, or keep the Bolt in hand and first attack. I think I'm too aggressive here with the Bolt, to be honest. Attacking here with the 2-2. Two -two. Does it kind of signal that I have another bolt in hand? Yeah, he, I think he kind of has to block when you're that low, right? So I'm going to regenerate and play another bolt. Yeah, if I had two bolts, but maybe it just drew into it. But then I should have just played that on the life total of Jakob, right? It would be so low. Then again, the creatures are now wiped. 
Oh, there's a disintegrate though, probably on exactly on the off turn troll, but I can attack next turn for two. Again, drawing an extra card here with the Gem Day Tome, so I can now attack with the factory. I can put him on eight. Very close to, uh, to a victory here, but I'm not there yet though. There's the attack, two, two. Gonna put Jakob on eight. What will happen next? There's another mountain. He needs a blocker. Okay, there is the blocker. Yeah, five is the magic number for Jakob. can start casting his two-headed giants, playing a full play set of those. Drawing a card for turn. This is kind of tough. Now I have to decide, am I going to attack with both creatures to deal some damage and probably losing my factory? Or not, that's the question. Could also be patient. Still drawing twice as many cards as Jakob. There's just the attack with the Sedge. There's the block. There's the regenerate. And there's a bolt. Again, a bolt. Lucy, I played four bolts. I could have, if I would have just pointed those at Jakob, he would be dead. <laughs> I mean, it's the choices you make, I guess. I'm just really trying to control the board. I guess that's what I'm doing. And of course, you don't know in my defense when you have that first bolt, you don't know that the other three are going to come so quickly. But yeah, still, I think I think at times I was a bit too hasty. Anyway, uh, Jakob here, look at that, playing another giant frost giant of 4-4. Four, four. Drawing a card for turn, and of course drawing the extra card at the end step of Jakob. What can I do? Tapping two black. I wonder what my plan is with the two black. Oh, there's a Terra though. Yeah, that is tough for Jakob. Now I can swing in for five, and of course here you can see uh, the result of me drawing twice as many cards as Jakob for what, three turns in a row now. Of course, I'm going to find those answers. I'm going to find the bolt. I'm going to find the terror. I'm just going to find the pieces I need to win this game. Jakob dropping to three, probably going into his last turn. There's a desert. What can he do? There's another two-headed giant. Okay, I mean, he can prolong it for one more turn. Going to draw another card. Untap, upkeep, draw. If I can play a Terror here on the Giant, then I've got the game. If not, I have a tough decision to make. Am I going to attack with the Setch and the Factory? I guess I should, right? Because he has to block the, the Setch or else he's dead. So I can just safely attack with both creatures. I would put him on one. I wonder if I see it, though. Okay, there's a Rook Egg. I'm passing the turn. Oh, that is... Oh, no. Oh, this is so annoying. I'm playing so sloppy. Oh, man. I'm not... The thing is, you got to see it. Or I am seeing it. Okay, yeah, I am seeing it now. I think Jakob actually mentioned... Did you, Jakob? I can't really remember. I think Jakob mentioned it. So he's going to play a bolt here. Uh, on the factory now and he's going to block the set. He's not going to take any damage anyway, but that was the right play to make, at least in my opinion, to do attack because he has to block. If he doesn't have to bolt, he has to block the set, take two, go to one. Anyway, there's another two-headed giant. Jakob is not dead, by the way. Just a newsflash. He's still very much alive, despite the fact that I'm drawing twice as many cards. And remember, he's in bolt range, but I've used all my lightning bolts. I think they're all in there. They're all in the graveyard. So, ay, 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 three cards in hand. I wonder if I'm just going to use the book again. Would make sense, right? Yeah, exactly. Using the book again. I mean, I have to win this, right? If I still lose this... That would be a great accomplishment by Jakob. Let, let's, let's look at it from the positive side. Passing a turn here back to Jakob. He's going to tap a lot. Uh-oh, what's he going to do for eight? Fireball for eight. Could go fireball for nine. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So, okay. At least... I'm going to play a Terror on my own 
egg. So I get a 4-4 flyer. I can kill him now, right? He doesn't have a blocker. Oh, there I go. Finally winning a game. Well, finally, it's the third game. But look at that. He did have another burn spell in hand. For a moment there, I thought, wait a minute. Is he going to burn me this turn, deal some damage somehow, and then still burn me to death? But at least I managed to win a game. And I have to say, Jakob, your, your giant deck, it's good. It's strong. It is pretty fierce. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun to play against you, to talk about strategy and talk about your deck. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the matches. And of course, also thank you for becoming a patron of the show. The help of the patrons is super important. It helps me to keep doing what I'm doing, to keep making videos for you, to visit tournaments all over and live stream from those locations and of course make those reports for you as well so if you enjoy the work that i do if you enjoy the videos please consider becoming a patron as well check out patreon.com slash timmy talks uh, to find out how you can support the channel uh, and maybe i can also play a game against you just like i did against uh, uh, jacob and the cool thing is if you become a patron of the show at the two dollar dollar or higher tier level your name will be mentioned in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor